This short lecture uh, is an introduction to a type of material referred to as a dielectric. So die means two, and electric means there's something electrical about it. Uh, the two simply refers to um, the positive and negative uh, charges, honestly. Um, so one of the biggest properties uh, of a dielectric material is the fact that it is an insulator. That is, it's not a metal, right? It's not a conductor. But actually, it's only an insulator up to a point. Um, and after this point, it's it becomes a conductor. And the when it turns into a conductor, this is often referred to as a breakdown, referred to as a dielectric breakdown. And this is associated a lot of the times with catastrophic consequences, actually. Um, an example of a phenomenon associated with dielectric breakdown is if you have a cloud, and in between the cloud and the ground is air, all of a sudden, something that can happen is the air becomes a conductor with a lightning strike, right? Which can start fires, it's very hot, very loud, energetic. And that's the sense in which I have a catastrophe. And the insulator that became a conductor is the air. The air itself is the dielectric and a lightning strike is a phenomenon associated with a breakdown. Um, so, uh, but what I'm gonna talk about for the most part in this lecture is while the material is, a, is an insulator, it actually is pretty cool to study in and of itself, right? So the, the dielectric breakdown is interesting, but before it breaks down, um, while it's still an insulator, it's got interesting electrical properties that you can um, leverage uh, in capacitors. So it's a capacitance um, issue. All right, so some example dielectrics. So example materials include Um, air, paper, uh, I'm going to call it glass, but what I've seen is there's lots of different kinds of glass, and um, in particular, I want to talk about a material called Pyrex, which is, a, you know, an engineered material. Um, then, so these aren't too ex exotic, air, paper, and glass, but an ex another example is mineral oil, um, which is, you know, a liquid. So uh, the materials do not have to be uh, solids, right? Paper's a solid, glass is a solid, mineral oil is a liquid. Air, uh, I'm talking about the gas version of air, right? And then there's um, a really interesting... Uh, extreme material, like exotic material, called strontium titanate, right? So strontium is, a, is an element on the periodic table, titanium is as well, and titanate is got some extra stuff associated with the titanium, right? It's a really interesting material. And then you can even talk about the um, dielectric insulator known as nothing, which is vacuum. So dielectrics have a dielectric constant called kappa. So kappa is a Greek letter, looks a lot like the Latin letter K, but the way you pronounce the letter's name is kappa, K-A-P-P-A, -P -P but it's so for, for us in, in this section of material, this thing denotes how much of a dielectric dielectrics are. So it turns out that air has a dielectric kappa 
let me actually let me let me form it correctly it's like a curved sort of c shape stuck to a vertical line so kappa um, air is very close to one 1.00054 um, paper's dielectric constant is about 3.5 it actually will depend on what kind of paper um, pyrex has a slightly larger dielectric uh, constant. Mineral oil, um, I can't remember right now. Uh, you could look it up. Um, you just Google, right, dielectric constant for mineral oil. Uh, you could do the dielectric constant of gasoline, like, you, you know, anything really. Strontium, uh, strontium titanate, the reason I think it's really cool is its number is exotic. It's 310. It's huge compared to other materials. And then the vacuum, in a sense, is the most boring one, but the perfect vacuum, perfect empty space, has dielectric constant equal to 1. So kappa is a number that is bigger than or equal to 1, and it does not have units. It's a so-called dimensionless physical attribute. It's, it's dimensionless. It won't have any units. Okay. So these are ex example materials. And each of these materials, you could imagine taking on any shape. You know, you can have a shape like a rectangular solid volume of air, or a cylindrical solid piece of paper. You can have some sort of a container that holds mineral oil into the shape of a sphere, right? Strontium titanate is probably some solid. Maybe it's like a powder or something, and you could pack that powder into any shape you want. And of course, the vacuum takes on any shape. Uh, so, um, so you can choose the shape. So here, let me... Um, let me tell you about why dielectrics are interesting. So dielectrics are interesting because they have a special response to electric field. Um, they can be induced into polarization. So what does that look like? So imagine some electric field for the, um, for the purposes of the example right now, I'm going to imagine an electric field that um, maybe I'll draw it. Yeah, I'll just keep it in black. So electric field. So I'm going to draw an electric field line diagram uh, associated with a uniform electric field. So uniform means the electric field is always in the same direction, which means that all the field lines are straight lines. They all point in the same direction, right? Um, and more than that, the distance between adjacent field lines is constant, right? That's what's meant by a constant strength electric field um, with a constant direction. So in, in the picture, it, it all points towards the right. So this electric field is considered uniform. So this electric field, I want to copy it because I want to add something to it. So, oops, copy... Um, I'm not sure why it erased it, so maybe let me put it here, so copy as well, and I'll paste it here. So here's two copies of the same electric field. Um, this, so this electric field, let me call it, uh, let me give it a kind of um, a name that's got some implications. So this is an electric field 
because of some sort of external force, right? You could imagine there's positive charges on the left, negative charges on the right. I don't really care what the external source is. I just want to say, I've got an electric field for some reason. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take one of these dielectric materials. Uh, why don't we imagine this one right here and um, consider it to be some rectangular solid piece of metal. So let me make it and choose it to be colored red. And I'm just gonna put it in the field. So I just put in some sort of dielectric material. So I'll, I'll just indicate that kappa indicates that it's a dielectric. So what I'm telling you is dielectrics are interesting because they have a response to electric field. So this dielectric is going to have a response to this electric field which already existed. And the response it can have is it's going to polarize. So you know that this dielectric material is made out of atoms and atoms have protons and electrons. And what this material is going to do is it's going to right see this background external electric field. The protons are going to be pushed over towards the right. The electrons are going to be sort of pushed over towards the left. And the dielectric is going to polarize. So this electric field induces a polarization, but because it induces a polarization, there's going to be a new electric field that is the response to the external field. So the dielectric is going to bring its own field. And I'd like you to notice that it points in the opposite direction to the external field. So that means now inside the dielectric, there is a new net electric field, which is equal to the electric field that was already there plus the response by the dielectric. And the, this is where the dielectric constant K gets its meaning. This net electric field is related to the original electric field that was already there before you put the dielectric there, but divided by kappa. That is, the field inside of the dielectric is going to be smaller than the field that was there before you put the dielectric. Um, you always get a smaller field because the dielectric's response oops, is opposite to the external field. Right? It's opposite in the sense that the green arrows, which represent the electric field associated with the response, are in the opposite direction to the external field um, yeah, which the dielectric is responding to. So the thing that we can pay attention to now is essentially this relationship. And this is the meaning of the dielectric constant. So for example, glass, if I put in glass, right, the electric field is going to be cut down by a factor of five. So I'll put one over 4.7. So if the external field had a certain strength, then what I'm gonna find is the new field inside of the dielectric, which is a combination of the old field and a response, the new field is one fifth of the old field. 
If I instead used this really exotic material, strontium titanate, then I wouldn't be dividing by 5, I'd be dividing by 310. So strontium titanate is extremely good at reducing electric field. If the field is reduced, then delta V is also reduced, right? Because remember that delta V is loosely associated with the electric field multiplied over a distance, right? So this, I'm, I'm saying loosely because it's not a bad approximation to understanding the relationship between electric field and the potential difference between two places, right? Potential difference between two places that are a distance d apart. Um, remember though that the actual formula looks more like this, right? Where this distance is the distance between, say, two locations, x1 and x2. So, um, so the electric field has a very specific connection to the potential difference. But in a loose way, you can say it this way. And this is kind of instructive, actually. So um, I think this is really cool. So imagine this, you know, we use units of volts. And this right here is like a distance. So for example, what if the distance is in millimeters? Then the electric field, one way to understand electric field units is electric field units are like volts per millimeter. This is a useful way to think about electric field strength. And the reason I bring it up in the context of this um, lecture here is there's another sort of interesting um, number that you can associate with materials. So let me do this other number. Um, so there is a number called, or, or a number associated with dielectric breakdown. And the dielectric breakdown is actually listed in terms of the strength of electric field. And the strength of the electric field in the case of the uh, dielectric breakdown is going to be given in units of volts per millimeter because it, what it does is it specifies electric field strength. So here's uh, the basic idea. If you have a weak electric field, so it's weak in this drawing because the field lines are far apart, then an atom inside of a dielectric, right, the reason why we get polarization we, the, the pluses go on one side and the minuses go on the other, is because every atom in your dielectric charge separates. So this atom charge separates and this atom charge separates, right? This atom charge separates. But the atom doesn't get torn apart by this weak electric field. But if you have a stronger electric field, then every atom gets stretched out further. So the plus is on the right and the minus is on the left. But if you have a really, really, really high voltage per distance number, then your atom, let me change its color so it's easier to see, might actually rip apart so that the positive charge and the negative charge run away from each other. And this is a lightning strike, right? So that is the electric field becomes so high around air molecules that the air molecules break down. They split apart. The positive charge of an air molecule runs in one direction and the negative charge of an air molecule runs in the opposite direction. And what that looks like when you watch it happen is the lightning bolt that travels from 
you know, between the cloud and the ground. When, when this breakdown happens, you get a huge pressure change which means there's going to be a very loud noise. You also get a whole bunch of energy released in the form of light and also thermal energy. It's really hot, right? Um, so people who are struck by lightning get burned badly, right? Okay, so I'm going to talk about capacitors and dielectrics in, the, um, in, in a following video.